Hi, welcome to this Fusion 360 complete guide on how to design your own arcade cabinet from scratch. And um, if you found this video by accident, I'm Daniel and I do build arcade cabinets. So I have many videos online uh, where you can see me actually build the design we are going to make now, uh, which might be a lot of fun as well for you to see. But in this video, uh, we are going to have a lot of fun because I'm going to show you uh, how to design your own arcade cabinet step by step. And we are going to include everything. I assume that you already installed Fusion 360. If not, you can just go to the Fusion uh, website, website, Fusion 360 download, go to the Autodesk website, uh, go to local site, and you can just uh, download it there. Uh, it is a free program for personal use. I do have the paid version, of course, as I make many uh, designs for clients. This will be a multi-part tutorial video. It is beginner oriented, so I'm going to include um, material for people that never worked with Fusion 360, but I'm also going to include, include advanced and even expert tips. So there might be something in this video series for everybody. Now some general information, uh, the dimensions I'm using here are pure fictional and they are used for this tutorial only. But uh, I will make this file, this design file freely available for you. You can download it, uh, you can find the link down in the description and you can use it as a tool, as a practice tool uh, together with this tutorial series uh, to, work how to, learn, uh, to learn how to work with Fusion 360. Another important thing, I do not work for Autodesk or Fusion 360. So uh, for questions or bugs or uh, problems you might encounter with this program, do not email me, please do not email me, but uh, email uh, Autodesk or use their great community if you have questions about the program. If you have questions about arcade cabinets or uh, with your special arcade cabinet design, of course you are always allowed to email me and a link with my email address is also down in the uh, description. So without further ado, let's get started. What are we actually going to design? So this is it. This is a two player arcade cabinet. And uh, it looks uh, really cool already. And we are not going only going to design it. Uh, we are going to make a buildable technical correct model out of it. Modeling is one thing, but make it a buildable uh, model is uh, another. Uh, so let's give you a quick tour. If you never worked in Fusion before. Um, oh, by the way, you can see a small keyboard uh, here uh, uh, down at the lower right side. You can see if I click uh, with one of the mouse buttons, you can see that happening. And if I um, type in stuff, you can also see what I'm doing uh, here. So I hope this is useful. So, about navigation. If um, you want to move the camera, you hold the middle mouse button. You can go up, down, left or right. If, however, you want to free orbit the camera, you hold the left shift and, and hold the middle mouse button. And then you can free orbit the camera, just like this. If you want to zoom in or out, you can just use the mouse wheel. And if you want to reverse the zoom direction, which I always like to do, you click on your name here. There should be an icon uh, here. Go to preferences and select reverse zoom direction, um, which I always have selected here. So reverse zoom direction. Um, if you have a model like this and you select one of the sides and then you select uh, this button here, look at the camera is oriented towards that design. So let's take the right side, look at and then the camera will face that design. This is a really easy tool. Uh, another way of doing this is using the box here. You can take the box, hold down your mouse button and just uh, use it, click on it, uh, click on the small arrows and you find it quite easy um, to see what you are doing. So practice with this uh, first. Uh, also make sure if you right click on the box, that perspective with ortho faces is selected. Um, if it's an or orthographic, uh, you can work with this, but as you can see, uh, the perspective is off. Let me give you an um, example. 
it still looks okay but as you can see the cabinet is completely skewed now and this is just because of the camera so right click perspective with ortho faces and now the perspective is correct and uh, you can actually see what you are building so at the left side you can see the data panel you can hide or select it right here in this data panel is your uh, folder which is a tutorial folder in my case and your file name which is the arcade cabinet version 3 here you can see the version number so if i change anything to this design so let's say that i uh, let's open up the panel and let's open up the back panel and uh, the lower back panel as well so now i changed it so now it's open uh, by the way, I will show you how to do this uh, later in the tutorial series. Uh, it's quite fun, it works with joints. Uh, anyway, if I save it now by pressing Ctrl S, I can insert a version description. So, a cabinet opens again, press OK. And now my version number will change to version 16. Let's wait for that. And uh, you can always go back a version, so it keeps, let me show all the versions, it, it keeps all the versions uh, right here. So this is your data panel, let's um, close it up, let's close the model. Um, then what is important, so let's start from the top, this is the design environment, this is the environment we are focusing on the most. Um, there is also a drawing uh, environment. A manufacture simulation animation and a render environment if you want to make a render out of your 3d model but for now we are focusing on the design um, environment so make sure you are inside the design environment um, let me see at the left part here is your browser everything you do here will be inside this browser so all of your sketches and your bodies and your components everything will be right in here now at the lower uh, part here, you can see, uh, of course, the look at button. We uh, did that. There's also an orbit button. If you don't want to use the middle mouse and the shift, you can just freely orbit it by pressing this button. Um, but let's go to display settings. And as you can see, uh, my environment is set to gray room. Normally, it's set to photo booth, which is quite cool, but it's really giving me a lot of light and it's already late. So I prefer to set it, the environment on gray room, but you can choose your own environment. Um, you can go to grid settings. So if you want to get rid of the grid, you can do that. You can make the mouse cursor snap, your design snap to the grid. Uh, many people leave this unchecked. I kind of uh, like it, so I leave it, uh, um, I leave it on. So these are your grid settings. And then you have the uh, visual style. Um, let me show you, it's shaded with visible edges only at this time. I can do shaded with hidden edges. Now you can see through the arcade panel a little bit. This can be useful when you're modeling. Or you can set it to wireframe. Now you have a simplified version. Like this. Or you can do, uh, let me see, visual style. Um, um, uh, shaded with uh, no edges at all there are no edges but I kind of like uh, shaded with hidden edges or visible edges only the visible edges only is the cleanest version uh, to work in so um, then let's get started uh, I will try to make each video uh, under 20 minutes um, and let's start uh, by uh, making a new design so file new design uh, let's press ctrl s to save it and we call it arcade cabinet uh, tutorial let's click save and remember that in your data panel in this tutorial folder is now a new file and let me close the old one so this one we will close don't save it and we are now let me close the data panel let me hide it we are now in an empty file make sure uh, origin is on by clicking the little eye icon and let's start by right clicking on one of the planes let's do this and create a sketch 
we are now in the sketch mode and this is your drawing mode. So let's select the two point rectangle, select the origin point, make a, a rectangle that kind of uh, is at the correct dimension of your, uh, you want your arcade a cabinet to be. So I want this to be 170 centimeters in height and about 70 centimeters in width. Let me zoom out like this. Um, by the way, if you are in America or if you're using the imperial system, this is no problem at all. You can, uh, you can select centimeters or I can select maybe uh, f uh, five uh, feet, which is, far, <laughs> which is too much of course, but you can um, use it interchangeably. So millimeters, centimeters, feet, inches, it doesn't matter. You can just type it in. So now you can see uh, our first sketch and um, if you finish this sketch, you can see it in your environment right here. You can select it, press E to extrude it, and then you can make a solid out of this sketch. So this is basically what we're going to do. Let's click on it, let's edit the sketch. Well, basically what we're going to do with the arcade cabinet. So let's start by selecting the line tool. And we are basically sketching out the, uh, the arcade cabinet a little bit. It does not need to be perfect. I will make it as sloppy as I can get it for you, just to give you a basic understanding. So here you have a totally messed up, but kind of uh, apparent um, arcade cabinet. Let me press the escape key. Um, let's extrude it just for you to see. So this is the shape we made. If I make an extrusion like this, um, the sketch will disappear. Uh, you will click this arrow here and you can um, re-enable it right here. And generally it's a good thing to uh, name your sketches. You do this by double clicking on them and call them Arcade uh, Cabinet, just like this. Now you can see that this sketch is blue, which means that it's non-defined. It's not defined yet. And you always, 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 always need to define your sketches. And I will tell you why. Because if you are in your, oh, sorry, finish sketch. If you're um, working on it and your sketch is non-defined, you can see these small points here, right? So I can grab this sketch, move it, but now my design moves as well, which is, totally not something you want to do uh, by accident. Um, the white one, the, the white sketch here is a defined sketch, which means that if we create a solid out of this one, we cannot move it anymore. It's super safe. So first thing you have learned now is that you need to define your sketch. So let's right click edit sketch and I'm going to show you how to define it. And there are two ways of doing it. And defining a sketch basically means telling the program where the sketch is in space. So you need to give it dimensions and constraints. So what are dimensions and constraints? Constraints are, uh, are here, the constraint tools. They are also here in this, uh, uh, in this palette window here. And let me show you, there are some constraints already. Let me get rid of them for you. And then it's easier to understand what they do. So as you can see, this line is completely not straight. If I select a horizontal vertical constraint and I select this line, this line is now horizontal. And if I select it on the bottom, this is horizontal as well. So all lines that need to be horizontal, I have selected now. So they are constrained. Now, um, these are not 90 degree uh, angles. I want them to be perpendicular. So Let's place constraints right here. I just select them. And as you can see now, I'm constraining um, the corners. And still the, the design can be moved in any direction because we also need to have dimensions. So a general rule is that you start with adding constraints and then you add dimensions. Um, so let's add some dimensions right now. Let's say that the back is 1485 and the top panel is, uh, let me get it like this, 
475. This is the um, place where the marquee panel will be. This is 250. This is all millimeters, of course. This will be 270. Uh, this is the part that the control panel will rust on, which is always 10 centimeters. Uh, this is 100 of uh, 615 centimeters, and this one will be 500. And it's starting to look like a arcade already. So let's give this a dimension of 277. This is the part the panel rests on, which is 192. And this is the uh, PC window or the window, which is 480. So let's press escape. And now you can see that the arcade cabinet is not yet constrained because it's not wide yet, but uh, uh, you can only move it. You can only move the entire thing because it does not know where it is in space yet. So let's do that now. Let's select the box, get rid of it by pressing the backspace button. Now uh, let's select uh, coincident constraint, select the bottom, select the bottom or the origin point. And now your first line is white. If I press escape now and I try to move the cabinet, I can only move it left to right, not up and down anymore. Now take the coincident constraint again, select it, select the origin point, and now it's stuck in space. And now I cannot move the design anymore and it's completely white. So now we fully define the sketch. Let's finish the sketch. And as you can see, the, uh, the solid, the body is also automatically updated. So this is what makes parametric modeling so great. So if you change a parameter, uh, your model will change accordingly, which is really cool. So, and this is how our cabinet uh, will look like uh, later. Uh, of course, uh, we will need a box. Let's press S for a shortcut. Let's um, type in box, select uh, the, the part where the box will be on. Let's create it here. Let's make it 100 millimeters height. And now uh, you can see that this is kind of how the arcade cabinet will look like in a well. In the next video, we are continuing with this design and I'm going to show you how to create all the panels and make this a buildable model. So thank you so much for watching um, this first part and uh, love to see you back in part two. Bye.